My goodness, I was born here in Gilmer. My parents were born here in Gilmer. Phoebe Phillips still gets excited when she talks about her hometown and the East Texas Yamboree Festival. So it goes, it goes a long way back. And you're chosen by service clubs. I was chosen by the 20th Century Club and the girls sell tickets. Phoebe won the race for Queen, fundraising like all the queens before and after her. But her family connection to the Yamboree goes way back to 1951 when her mother was named Queen. And then 25 years later, I was the 39th. I am the first daughter of a Yambri Queen to be a Yambri Queen. And then she and her mother collaborated for another first. So we were on the way to the tea and my mother says to me, um, I, I think you should wear red. All of the girls had worn white before and I thought it was a brilliant idea. Not just any red though, her mom envisioned her in red velvet. We went to Dallas looking for red velvet fabric. We were looking for just the right red, not a garnet, not too dark, not a coral that's too orangey, but just the right color. And lo and behold, we came back and we found it in Tyler at Esther's, which was this classic store in Tyler. It was like, a, it was a wonderland. And so we got the fabric there, we got all of the stones, we got my crown. Phoebe's mom designed the dress and in the end had to make it too. The dress was being made actually by seamstress who made Yambri dresses and there were some debacles. They had cut it off kind of short above my knee. She had put in sleeves that were so tight I couldn't even move and I came home in tears and my mother said I will make your dress. So we had to go back to Esther's and get more red velvet and we were up against the time the official photo for the program and she made that dress in about um, three days, put the stones on it, put everything on it. There was no time to put sleeves in it. Of course, no Yambari dress is complete without a train. And in true Phillips fashion, another first for that too. I was also the first queen to have her own train. I did not wear the Yambari train. And it, it was it's the first one to have as many rhinestones on it. 15 feet of red velvet, and the pea that adorns the train was the inspiration from a childhood friend. We were sitting there coming up with designs of what kind of a pea can we make that will look elegant on that dress. So I sketched that out, kind of a royal looking pea, and after probably an hour or two of us drawing all kinds of peas, and I came up with that one, she said, that's it. And the next time Dennis Campbell got to see it, when Phoebe took the stage at the Yamboree Queen's Coronation. Auditorium was dark, and the lights hit on that thing. It lit the room up. I mean, it was lights everywhere. To this day, I still remember the oohs, the ahs, the gasps, the screams, and all of the light that came off of those rhinestones and all of those mirrors. And I stopped just to look around at it and just to listen. And it couldn't have been more beautiful. It really couldn't. And uh, I was very proud of Phoebe and, and get to be a part of that with her. While being a lady in red instead of white may have been pushing the envelope for the times, Phoebe feels honored to be a part of a vibrant new tradition. Now they have color. They have freedom of choice of color. And it is bright, it is vibrant, it is alive, it is a festival. From Gilmer, Dana Huey, CBS 19.